Hi, I'm Kevin Polson for Threat Level. Christopher Tarnovsky is a hacker who specializes in hacking smart cards. He was so good at this that he was actually hired by a company that makes smart cards for the satellite TV industry to help them secure their systems from satellite pirates. Uh, he's now working independently as a contractor, and last week he opened up his San Diego laboratory exclusively to Wired.com in order to show us his latest technique for circumventing the physical security that protects smart cards from hackers in the first place. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take out this piece of metal, we're going to remove it, uh, we're going to expose it to some acids. Uh, the first phase is going to remove the epoxy and actually expo expose the chip. So this white stuff's gonna come off. So, so basically the, the plastic's broken down now after about 10 minutes have gone by. First phase of exposure is going to be to get to the actual device inside the substrate. We're going to put acetone in two, these two beakers. Uh, one is going to be the, the nitric rinse and then the second beaker will be considered clean and that'll be the final rinse in ultrasonic. We're gonna pull these out and we're gonna stick them on the hot plate with some fuming nitric acid, HNO3. Um, very, very dangerous. Um, it's a very aggressive acid. So I'm going to wash it. I'm going to rinse it. That piece is now finished. He's opened up enough. Just removing the extra. So the ultrasonic is going to basically give vibrations to this and, and clean off any residue that's left. You can see on the monitor, it looks good. It looks beautifully clean. And we're going to put the chip back in place. Uh, if you look at this chip, there's basically two layers and a top and a third top layer as a security area. So, to touch the metal down on that second layer, we're we're going to burn a hole through it. But we're going to burn a very special hole that that I will make with a mask. We just want to coat the top, creating basically a mask. We'll, we'll give this some time to dry, and then we're going to use a sewing type of needle, being held by a micro positioner. To, to kind of scratch a hole in this area. And I really don't need to open the whole area, but I basically want to touch this middle area where their data bus is and the side where there's a control line that I'm after. I'm just making a window with the needle scratching. There's nail polish covering the, this mesh, and here's the hole. So we're gonna leave the needle sucked down where it is. We're gonna pull it out, and this chip is prepped and ready. So this time we're going to, again, use this fume hood we're going to uh, use hydrofluoric acid and we're going to put a drop of hydrofluoric acid for 30 seconds the first time. Hydrofluoric acid is resistive to nail polish as well as mar magic marker. Then we're going to, uh, to rinse it in water. We're going to then look at it under, the, under this microscope just to see how deep did it go, did it do anything yet. And then we're going to do very selected, selective time etches of say 15 seconds. The rate of etch on this depends on how much hydrofluoric acid you have and how hot the, uh, the hot plate is. So now we'll, we'll rinse it in acetone. So I'm going to really quick, using uh, UV light, expose the, the lines of this chip. Um, now we're going to, we're going to sit on the bus with a needle eight times and we're going to listen. The yellow line will be what we're touching on the substrate. The blue line represents reset. Every time I reset the card, we're going to build a log of where the chip went when it powered up. And you're basically going to see everything. So we're going to take 800 hexadecimal samples. So this is just a, a, a sequential order of the samples taken. Sample 500 hex, sample 520, and what I saw at the period of time. Anything in the chip, I can see it right here. As we take more samples, it's all going to fall into place and you'll see it. I could actually send a management message, for example, into the chip and eavesdrop everything the chip did to decrypt the message, for example. So if I can see, I can do anything I want to right now. I can control it or I can listen. I can, I can read out the e-square if I wanted to. I could read out the ROM. Anything goes at this point in time versus glitching with a glitcher.